Welcome to On The Way, where we explore the difference following Jesus makes in our lives. During season four, we are talking about the fruit of the Spirit, listed by Paul in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. On The Way is produced by The Baptist Standard, a donor-supported provider of news, opinion, and resources for living like Jesus. We're glad you're with us today. We have with us today Albert Reyes. He is the CEO of Buckner International. It's so good to have you with us today. Thanks, Eric. Uh, you know, serving as the sixth president of Buckner is, is quite an honor for me. As you know, Buckner is in his 142 years of serving vulnerable children, orphans, families, and senior adults. And so we, um, we uh, continue this wonderful ministry of not just telling the gospel, but doing it. Uh, every day in the lives of people who struggle and, and trying to make a life better for those when they come to the sunset of their lives. So from the very beginning to the ending, everything in between is what Buckner focuses on. So I'm really pleased to be sharing uh, about our work today. Yeah, thank you. So as you know, we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit, but not all of the fruit of the Spirit, uh, although we may touch on some others. We're focusing on love, which is the first in Paul's list in Galatians 5. So I'm curious, what is Paul getting at with this word love? We, in English, we have one word uh, for love, uh, but Paul and many other languages, I say Paul, Greek, uh, and many other languages have multiple words for love. And so when Paul is talking about love, he's being more specific than we tend to be in English. So tell us, what, what is Paul getting at? Yeah, you know, there, there are different dimensions and shades of uh, the word love in the New Testament Greek language. The one we're talking about is probably going to be closer to agape love. It's, um, you know, it's a sacrificial love. It, it, uh, you know, when, when, I, when he's talking about the fruits of the Spirit, let's remember it's the Spirit of Jesus, right? It's the Spirit of God. So... You know, uh, it's not Jesus in the human form. Um, it, it, it's really his spirit in us. And so if, if his spirit lives within us, then evidence of that, of that spirit, or let's say fruit of that spirit, will be the list that he talked about. Love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, meekness, joy, self-control. And so uh, it's, then it would be the love of Jesus, right? The, 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 what, what kind of love did he demonstrate? Well, um, greater love has no man but to give his life for his friends. And that's what Jesus did. He sacrificed everything. He gave everything for us. And so taking that kind of love, uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very unique kind of love, not very common in today's um, society, in today's world, for someone to empty themselves and sacrifice what they have for the benefit of another person. I really believe that's what Paul is talking about, is that kind of love that's willing to put someone else first and serve uh, them for their benefit. And he describes this love a bit more fully in 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, a lot of people have that read at their weddings. Uh, you know, that's, we, we hear that a lot at weddings. Uh, also in Romans chapter 12, he uh, describes this kind of love. Right. Uh, so in his context, people today are saying a lot about that Paul's context is pretty similar to our context, that um, there were lots of expressions of love uh, or different things that people loved, whatever. Uh, and so sometimes we think that Paul is simplistic in, in what he's saying or uh, not sophisticated enough. But it, it sounds like Paul's understanding of love was actually uh, pretty sophisticated. Yeah, I, I think it, uh, you know, like any Bible verse, any, any portion of scripture uh, can be taken out of context, lifted out and, and on its own can mean different things. But uh, we know that, that uh, Paul's writing in First Corinthians is really an extension of the life of uh, and the ministry of Jesus. And if you look at the words of Jesus, he's echoing the prophets, mm -hmm. right? So it, it, it has deep roots into the New Testament, New Testament writings of the ministry of Jesus, and then even deeper into the Old Testament. So when I think of 1 Corinthians 13, 13, you know, 
Uh, we have faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. It does make for a perfect wedding <laughs> verse, you know, uh, or song. And uh, But if you go back to what Paul would have known that Jesus said in Matthew 23, 23, he's, uh, that space between the, the uh, triumphant entry into Jerusalem all the way to the cross, that in that space of time, he stops and teaches on about 13 different topics at different places at different times. Sometimes a casual conversation, sometimes Jesus is responding to a question of the Pharisees, sometimes some spies are sent to try, try to trap him. Um, and so he's sometimes answering questions. And in Matthew 23, 23, it's one of those times when Jesus is teaching the people and but his focus is uh, on the Pharisees, you know, the teachers of the law. And he first says, hey, the Pharisees are important people. They sit in the seat of Moses. And so you must listen to them and 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 do what they say, he says, but don't do what they do mm. because they don't practice what they preach. And then it's like first it's like a big pat on the back and then it's like, whoa, here we go. And uh, and then one of the then there's seven woes that he says he's saying to the Pharisees, you know, it's really a statement of judgment and it's a sharp criticism. There's seven of them and one of them, he says, uh, the Pharisees are very careful to to do the tithe, you know, so they will tithe even the spices, you know, the mint and the cumin and, and so on. And so the spices uh, was really like above and beyond the requirement of tithe that you know you, you tithe your income you tithe off of your cattle and your significant resources if you're starting to tithe your spices it's your you're a super tither i mean you're, you're way out there yeah, so you're tithing from your luxury that's right it, yeah they're, they're they're they were so he was saying you know, they they tithe even that they're but but they missed the point right mm -hmm. they they focus on the on the minutia and they missed the big thing right they missed the big the main teaching which is what? Uh, justice, uh, mercy, and faithfulness. So he's got the, that trilogy, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. So he's starting to sound like the Old Testament prophets. Mm -hmm. In fact, he's starting to sound like one in particular whose name is Micah. And he says, you know, what does man require? What does God require of you, O man? He's already told you, right? To, to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. So Jesus is sort of kind of uh, reflecting back, right, to the pro prophetic teaching. And there you have the trilogy again. It's justice, it's mercy. And then Jesus changes it from walking humbly with your God in Matthew to faithfulness. So you might be, listeners might be asking, well, can he do that? And I would say, well, it's Jesus, <laughs> so <laughs> I think he, I think he can do that. You know, so you can you can substitute walking humbly with the, with your God, which is a measure of expression of your faith, and bring it forward to faithfulness. So then, in Matthew, then he carries it forward. And Paul carries that theme forward. So there it is: faith, hope, and love. He puts it in a different order. It's like looking in the rearview mirror. He looks it in the opposite direction. And, and, and so you have, you know, faith, you have hope, and you have love. And so there, you know, love then carries through the concept and theme of mercy that yeah. Micah talks about, right? To, 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 to love mercy, to be merciful, right? To give what, to not give what people deserve, right? We know grace is getting what we don't deserve, and mercy was, is not getting what we do deserve. And so that merciful uh, theme comes through into Matthew, and then it carries over uh, in in uh, it turns into love in uh, in Paul's writing. So, uh, you know, I say it very simply. You know, it's it, if you summarize it in in three words, right? Uh, pull weeds, plant seeds, do deeds. Mm -hmm. Very simple, and you can remember it. I even I remember it. So, <laughs> you know, pull weeds would be the justice, right? Planting seed is the faith, is the faith handed to us from one generation to the next. You're planting the seeds of faith. Right. And, and then doing deeds are the merciful, the mercy things, doing for others, um, you know, and, and so that there it is. And so, you know, pull weeds, uh, plant seeds, do deeds. And there is the trilogy that Paul talks about. And, you know, I think when you talk about love, it is about doing 
good deeds. It's doing, you know, after all, uh, you know, when Jesus said, no greater love hath no man, that he say he loves people? No. That he acts like he loves people? No. That, that he died, right? He mm -hmm. gave his life as a ransom for many. So love really is what you do. So I'll, I'll stop there. We'll be right back after a 15 second sponsor break. Since 1952, South Texas Children's Home Ministries has focused on healing hearts and sharing hope. Their nine ministries focus on helping hurting children and families, all regardless of an individual's ability to pay. To find out more, visit www.stchm.org. So let's take a minute and contrast this description of love with what we see so often in our culture or in the world around us so that we can have a clear picture of the difference between one love and another. What, what would you, how would you describe that contrast? Well, I think we, we, use, we use that word, uh, obviously when we use that word in contemporary society, we use it to mean different things. I love that shirt. I, you know, I love your microphone. I love, you know, I love this food. I love Mexican food. I love Chinese food. And so it's kind of means like, you know, you, you favor certain things, you know, uh, there's the romantic love, right? So someone falls in love with another person. And so whatever falling in love means, but they have passionate feelings for someone else, you know? And, and so yet the kind of love that Paul is talking about is the kind of love that's action oriented. You know, it, it means that you're, you're, you're doing something that's unmistakably, it's unmistakably clear that you are in a sacrificial way, you know, serving and doing something for someone else. So it would be the example of the Good Samaritan, right? So, so no one in the first century would ever put those two words together. Not if you're a Jew. A, a self-respecting Jew would never say the word good and the word Samaritan in the mm. same sentence. You know, it's, it's a... Mm -hmm oxymoron right so and yet jesus is telling the story to a jewish audience and the hero of all things is a samaritan person that does something for a wounded individual right and and so you know he he bandages his wounds takes him to the the inn the place where he can rest he puts money down to take care of his needs says he'll come back I mean, that's love and action is, is really doing something. And, um, so I and think putting that, yourself out. Yeah. 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 You're, you're spending your own resources. You're spending your own time. You're doing something you don't have to do. You're loving your neighbor who happens to be someone in your proximity, mm -hmm. someone near you. And in the global village, we're all neighbors, right? So we may not be physically right next to someone, but because of the blessing or curse of the internet, you know, we can be everywhere and see different things that are happening around the world. And so the world is our neighbor. You know, there's no one who's not our neighbor. Uh, there's different kinds of neighbors. Right. But um, yeah, it's, it's then what, you know, uh, what, what are you going to do um, in response to the need of your neighbor, in response of someone who's hurting? When Jesus was asked, you know, what is the great commandment? Well, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul and mind. And the second one is like it. So that means it's on equal footing, right? It's like it, you know, love your neighbor as yourself. And then he says, that the, the, the zinger for me is he says, by the way, all the law, which is the law of Moses and the prophets, the minor ones, including Micah and the major ones, including Isaiah and Jeremiah, you can take all those books and put it on and, and hang it on these two mm -hmm. commands, love mm -hmm. God, love your neighbor. So. You know, I think that's what Paul, it, it, he would have known that, right? He would have understood that. And when he's saying that powerful word, love, as a fruit of the Spirit, as a demonstration that Jesus in his Spirit is in you, then it's it, you're going to be like breathing, doing things for other people, right, that you don't have to do. We'll be back after a 60-second sponsor break. High Ground Advisors has a 90-year history of providing investment management and planned giving solutions to churches, faith-based organizations, and charitably-minded individuals dedicated to transforming lives. High Ground is trusted by over 450 nonprofit clients, and we're one of them. High Ground has partnered with Baptist Standard for over 70 years by offering a comprehensive charitable giving and investment solutions model, which includes asset management, planned giving education and development, account support services, 
real estate and minerals management, and expert legal consultation. High Ground and the Baptist Standard share similar values, such as serving those who are called and dedicated to transforming lives and being a trusted caretaker of legacies. They also value good stewardship, helping those who desire to be good stewards of their financial resources to find creative giving solutions to fulfill that calling. We trust High Ground and consider them a loyal partner because they deliver the performance results we depend on to grow our mission. With nearly a century dedicated to the nonprofit sector and as a nonprofit themselves, they understand the needs and challenges specific to us. They give us the opportunity to work with people who share our faith and values. They come alongside our mission in ways that other investment management firms can't. They know that what they do to protect, strengthen, and grow our mission is ultimately in service to the gospel. To learn more about how High Ground can partner with you or your organization, visit their website at highgroundadvisors.org. I would imagine in, in your work, in the work that Buckner does, uh, that there's probably a story or two, uh, at least, of this kind of love in action. Uh, so tell us some places where you see uh, this kind of sacrificial uh, risk-taking love in action. You know, our, we're able to do what we do, uh, Dr. Black, because of the generosity of uh, people in churches who give to their church budgets. And we have a program that that comes together and then through our state convention. Um, and then some of that money uh, comes to us. It funds and fuels the work that we do. But in addition to that, we have donors who give sacrificially. Um, and, uh, and so through the collaboration with uh, Butner supporters, we're able to invest in places like in Oaxaca, Mexico, where I met Maria Diaz. We had invested some resources in a water purification project, a poultry project for, for meat and for eggs, and also for a hydroponic garden project to grow okay. vegetables. Yeah. And so we put the money in there. I went on the 10th anniversary of Buckner in Oaxaca in Mexico. And, um, and so the ladies were gathered there. Maria Diaz was there representing them. And this is what she said in Spanish, uh, an incredible speech that she shared with those of us that were visiting. She said, we want to thank you for investing in our community. Because of your investment, we have clean water to drink for the whole community. We've got vegetables that we can grow. We've got you know, eggs and meat and, and chicken. And, and so we want you to know that we're not afraid to work. And we want you to see that we've made good on your investment. And then, and then the clincher for me was, she says, and we want our men who have gone to the North to work, to know that they can now come home because now, because of you, there's work here for them. Wow. I looked above mm -hmm. the heads of the women who were about 30 women gathered and I saw four men in the back of the group, you know, uh, who had come back, right? She says, our men have gone to the north to work, to support us, because there hasn't been work here. And but now, we, and they're sacrificing being over there away from us. We need them here. And now, because of this investment, we want them to know they can come back now, because there's work here that you, you've provided. So an incredible, you know, it's almost a double, triple message there is that the whole thing about immigration, and I know this is, topic is not about immigration, but you know, there might be good ups and downs and you know, rights and wrongs, but you know, I think generally uh, immigration or migration is a global phenomenon. People tend to like to go to places where they can eat, where they can work, where they can provide for their families. And in this case, this is what's happening. Uh, and I realize there's other uh, abuses and so on. Um, but we, we did one simple thing to help one community and, and it's just an incredible impact uh, of life change and transformation and the, the ability for them to not only hear the gospel, but see the gospel in action. This is what it's about. There, there is a lot in that story. And as you, as you noted, uh, it touches on so many different issues. And so what I hear in that is that this one word love and the way in which Paul understood that and ties it back to Christ and to the prophets and even to the the law uh, it, it there's really no way to keep it from touching all of these 
other issues and affecting all these other issues and sort of getting wrapped up in uh, these other issues. And I would say uh, that that's exactly what God intends with this kind of love, is that it should affect everything. Yeah, and it, it's, it's, the, it's the cousin of uh, hope, right? Mm -hmm. the, the cousin of faith. I mean, they're, they're related, they're intertwined, uh, different dimensions perhaps, you know. Uh, Bert Bacharach wrote a song, um, What the World Needs Lao, right? Yeah, love, yeah. sweet love. And I, I want to say, well, that might have worked for the 60s. I don't know if we're better <laughs> off. You know? but, uh, but if we're going to uh, offer hope, uh, offer love, then today we would want to offer hope. Mm. Right? Hope yeah. is, and, and, and a demonstration of love brings hope, right? Yeah. To unjust situations when love is done, people have hope. So again, mm. they're all tied together. As we come to the end of our conversation, we, we realize, sort of going back to the very beginning, that this love is something that comes from the Holy Spirit. It's not something we manufacture in ourselves, uh, but it really comes from the Holy Spirit. That being said, though, uh, we can practice and develop and sort of grow this love within us. It's not as if we're completely passive uh, in this. So what is a, a way that we can develop uh, this love in us and, and how we live our lives? Yeah, well, I, you know, unfortunately, I don't have a very comp complicated answer. I think it just comes down right. to, it just yeah. comes down to obedience. Hmm. Right? You know, Jesus, Jesus told us we to love one another, you know, and uh, I heard about a sermon recently that uh, unexpected sermon where uh, the point of the sermon was there's only two places in the scripture where God the Father is talking to Jesus the Son and says mm. something to him. And in both situations, he says the same thing. And so now that I've piqued your curiosity, here it is. Mm. Uh, and I didn't preach the sermon, nor did I research it, but he said three things. Uh, this is my son. I'm very pleased with him. Do what he says. Mm. End of sermon. <laughs> so, <laughs> is, that, is that not like is that not like our charge as disciples is to obey our master, right? So, so we don't get to choose to have love. It, it's it, it's it's a it's a it's either you obey and love others or you don't, right? And so, I think that uh, we just need to look look up, look around, and you have many opportunities to to do what the master. Has said, and it should flow out of his spirit in you to want to serve other people. It, it should be the incarnation of Jesus and the spirit of Jesus in the lives of others by us getting our hands dirty. It's going to take time, it's going to take resources, it's going to be inconvenient, it's going to be not on your calendar, not on your agenda. And uh, it's just, you know, we're the messengers, we've got the message. And, and we just have to get into the mess and start start uh, making things right. And that's that's what love is about. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for being with us. You bet. Following Jesus is a way of life carried out over a lifetime. If this podcast has encouraged you to become a follower of Jesus or to follow him more closely, we'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this podcast or found it helpful, please leave a review wherever you listen to podcasts so others can find it more easily. Thank you for being with us today. On the Way is produced by The Baptist Standard, a donor-supported provider of news, opinion, and resources for living like Jesus. To make a donation, visit baptiststandard.com forward slash donate. To receive The Baptist Standard weekly newsletter, visit baptiststandard.com and click or tap subscribe. 